Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to show you something a bit exotic from the south of India, from Goa. Goan fish curry. So this was requested back in August by J4 Protech, and it's taken a while to get around to it, but here we are. And it was also subsequently requested by Big Steve. In fact, not specifically go and fish curry, just a general fish curry. And back in the last century, before I'd ever heard of Goa, or had a go and fish curry, I thought when people were talking about go and fish curry, that was an instruction, as in go and fish for curry. Because I'm stupid. Anyway, <laughs> it isn't. So Goa is a state in the south of India, and they grow lots of coconuts, so that's a big element in this. And also, they like a bit of sourness in their curries, so that's where the tamarind comes in. And it's wonderful, and only about 100 ingredients, so quite easy. Let's do it. So to start with, I've got a load of spices. Actually, not as many as I need. I should have a couple of teaspoons of coriander seeds, but being a mere mortal, I've run out. However, uh, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of dried red chili flakes, three centimetres, a bit over an inch of fresh ginger, four garlic cloves, and a couple of little red chilies. I've also got a teaspoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of tamarind paste, some oil, rapeseed oil to saute it in, and a tablespoon of brown sugar. To be more authentic, you would use palm sugar, but haven't got any. Uh, 400 ml can of coconut milk, a couple of hundred mils of tomato, um, two little red onions, and a big handful of fresh coriander. I think that's everything. Oh, fish. <laughs> um, white fish, and I've also got some prawns. This is actually a fairly flexible recipe, so the type of fish doesn't matter, which is fortunate because you can't get most of the kind of fish they have in India. However, you can get mackerel and that is a favourite, but this is haddock and it'll be wonderful. So let's do it. So you need to toast your dry spices in a frying pan without oil. That's the cumin and the chilli flakes and it would be the coriander seeds if I had any. And now we need to peel and crush the garlic. And peel the ginger and just grate it. I love the smell of ginger. This isn't all that fresh actually, it's a little bit soggy so it's not grating very well. So maybe I'll just have to chop it by hand very, very finely. So this needs to be sort of um, turned into a paste. And I'm going to use my spice mill for that. You should use a mortar and pestle but I'm lazy. So I've got my uh, spices and a bit of salt, and I'm just going to whiz them to a pulp. Now I need to just finely well, peel and finely chop the onion. Right, now we're actually ready to start cooking. So I'm going to heat up some rapeseed oil in the pan <clears throat> and add the chopped onions and let them cook for about five minutes till they're golden not particularly browned. Meanwhile I'll chop these chilies in half and de-seed them and now we'll add the spice paste Stir that in, let that cook for a couple of minutes. Now I'll add the tomato. And this needs to cook for maybe another five minutes till it's lost nearly all its liquid. Okay, so that's uh, drying out quite a lot. And um, now we need to add the coconut milk. Oh my God, which doesn't have a, a ring pull top. Fortunately, I have a million year old can opener if I can remember how to work it. 
I know there's people on YouTube who can open a can with their thumb and stuff like that, but I'm not one of them. All right, there we go. So uh, you notice the, the fat from the coconut milk actually sets solid at room temperature. Don't worry about that because uh, there's liquid goop in there as well and it's all good. Of course, if you're in Goa, you would just reach out to your nearest coconut tree and grab a coconut and use that. But I'm not, I'm in Yorkshire. And at this point, if you're doing rice or anything else, get on with it. <laughs> that will thicken in five or 10 minutes. And uh, then we can add the fish and uh, then we can eat it. Okay, we need to throw in the other bits and bobs. So we've got the, the chilies, the sugar, tablespoon, and the turmeric. Remind me to get some more. <laughs> That's about a teaspoon. And the tamarind paste. If you haven't got tamarind paste, you can use vinegar. It's just to give a sour flavor. Two, no, three, ah, four, come on. Let that cook through for a bit and then taste it. Right, that's uh, looking and tasting good. So now I'm gonna throw in, I've chopped up the fresh coriander. Now I chuck most of it in and save a bit for garnish and time to chop up the fish so just well actually you know chop it into quite big chunks i'm leaving the skin on because i like it you don't have to if you don't like it and you know fish only takes uh well five minutes to cook that's why you put it in at the end you can tell it's cooked when the flesh loses its uh, sort of transparency it becomes solid looking and flakes easily away from the skin. Turn the heat up a little bit. And chuck in the prawns as well. Okay, I'm ready for some of this. That won't score you many points on MasterChef. <laughs> so, and uh, sprinkle of fresh coriander and here we go oh oh that looks good go on fish curry go on it's lovely and that's that i hope you enjoyed it now you can get the full recipe on my website keithcooks.com and there should be a link kicking around on the screen over there or down there and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my channel link link and uh, talk to me leave comments make requests keep it civil and friendly or i will ban you and thanks for watching and see you next time